Da, da, da. Uh, Miracle, this one is for you. Yes. Son of Kong seemingly confirmed as follow-up to Godzilla vs. Kong. Nice. Are so you... I need Baby Godzilla yes. and Son of Kong to go. Yep. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that's what they would want to happen here, right? Uh, so it says, uh, following the recent news that the next film for the MonsterVerse is moving ahead and set to film in Queensland, Australia, we now have more to confirm about this project. According to an update provided by Production Weekly via Kaiju News Outlet, not only will GVK, or Godzilla vs. Kong director Adam Wingard, return to direct the upcoming quasi-sequel to Godzilla vs. Kong, confirmed in a, uh, confirming another previous rumor, but the film also currently holds the working title of Son of Kong. So who knows if that, I mean, I'm assuming that means like usually they would hide a title like that mm -hmm. until they were ready to to announce but they have this art here from the oh, so badass. i know for the people on the uh listening in the podcast listening to the podcast it's a, just a badass image of godzilla and kong attacking each other as helicopters uh go overhead and there's uh, Do you ever think that like they're like they're both looking at each other open mouths and screaming and they're like no you pick the restaurant <laughs> That could be totally it. <laughs> no, it's like Actually, he... Godzilla could be reaching there. It's like, you've got something under your chin. Let me get that. Yeah, it kind of looks like uh, Kong is like reaching for something in Godzilla's hands. Like siblings being like, it's my turn to have the remote. That's exactly no, what it have is. Have you seen Peter Griffin uh, versus the big chicken? It's kind of like that where how the fight escalated. It's Peter Griffin um, saying, no, I'll pay for the check. And like the chicken's like, no, 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 no I'll pay for it. Yeah, no, I will. Yeah. I will. It's like that. Yep. So it says, should this temporary title remain, it would not be it would not be the first time King Kong return uh, fil a King Kong film turned its attention towards the kaiju's lineage. In 1933, RKO released the original Son of Kong, a direct sequel to the first King Kong film. In the in it, travelers to Skull Island find another kaiju ape they believe to be the direct offspring of the eighth wonder of the world. The next MonsterVerse, MonsterVerse entry could take the direction inspired inspiration from this film and show Kong finding more of his kind in the Hollow Earth. Man, we got some friends who would love to find the Hollow Earth. Am I right? Am I right? No. No? No Hollow Earth fans You're here? talking to the wrong person. Talk to Shane Cashman. But, um, inside, that is true. He, yeah. would love, he would love to talk but Hollow Earth. But Inside Job talked about Hollow Earth a little bit. Yep. So. so possibly uh, even settling down to, ha to have a child. So that's what I, I want to see a Sex in the City version of no. Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, where they just um, buy no. shoes and talk about and gossip about. It's so hard to date when you're a giant <laughs> when you're gorilla. a giant kaiju. It's it's very hard to find a soulmate when you're <sighs> busy destroying cities because of your large size. So sometimes uh, it's rough because you go there, you just destroy. You it. just destroy everything, and you're like, this is not what I want. Well, I think King Kong doesn't have a hard time because he can go for a ditzy blonde. While what? Who's the ditzy blonde? Um, you Isn't... remember it in the original? No, I, I know. I, I, I'm just making you say it. Uh, oh, God. No. <laughs> okay, so it says, with the film looking to be more of a Kong picture than a Godzilla one, much to Miracle's dismay. Mm -hmm. makes Godzilla's her agents are furious. Furious right now, and Miracle is furious with Godzilla's agents for not doing a better job, is what I'm learning here. It's unknown if the undisputed King of the Monsters will make a return appearance after making peace with his rival and swimming away at the end of Godzilla vs. Kong. They do that in every time they battle. They eventually mm -hmm. make peace and just swim off into the distance. Well, like they didn't destroy half of civilization. They really are siblings, you know what I mean? <laughs> Perfect. It's kind of like how um, Superman never gets in trouble for destroying half yeah. of the city. He just picks up somebody's car that they're still paying on and throws it at somebody and they're like, you know, I had like he's, two years where the like, payment. I am in a domain. I am Superman. <laughs> Superman domain. He's like, like, you know, do you think that guy's ever like, dude, that's my only way to work. I don't like Superman. Mm -hmm. Screw this guy. You couldn't have picked up the junker behind me. Mm -hmm. Bite me. <laughs> so however, there's always a chance Godzilla might have a small part in the upcoming installment. If it is, if he isn't being saved for Legendary's MonsterVerse Apple TV Plus series. Are they calling it Apple TV Plus now? They yeah. added a plus to it? Well, um, there's only one Apple TV. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But it says Apple TV Plus. But you don't know if it's a streaming service unless you have the Plus. You have to. If, well, it's, no. if there's no Plus, how do you know? How well, you it's know? not a streaming. Um, well, like Apple TV is a streaming service. It is, but like they don't need to add the Plus because it's the only one that exists. Yes. That says uh, if he does appear either as a cameo or something bigger, he and Kong may have to do battle against another monumental threat uh, to their respective reigns. More about Son of Kong or whatever the movie winds up being called is likely to come up very soon. So Miracle will be very happy to hear this. I can mm -hmm. already see her excite uh, the excitement uh, building up in her. Maybe I should just buy a limited edition Godzilla popcorn dispenser. You should. Uh, I was talking to someone the other day about um, how awful the 1998 Godzilla is and how I don't care. Mm -hmm. I, I love it anyway. There's so many movies from that era where I'm like, I know it's bad. I know it. Mm -hmm. I don't care. It's 
I it's stupid. Similar. I think if like you like something, there's no point in like you don't need to justify it. Yeah, mm-hmm. you don't need to justify. Also, like, it. look, there is stuff people don't care for that we can agree is not like well made or whatever else. But if you found it enjoyable, it's achieved its purpose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's all you need. So, all right. So we're gonna move on to J- uh, Jacques one. Joaquin Phoenix uh, Phoenix's Joker two hits pause. No screenplay turned into the studio. This is just a quick update mm-hmm. I want to give on this. It says, while the latest DC outing from Matt Reeves, the Batman is doing wonders at the box office, amassing acclaim and, and praise across multiple platforms. They just go into the sequel for the Joker has been has a disappointing update. And that's basically that uh, at one of the t- previous times we covered this, mm-hmm. they talked about having a uh, like a rough draft or a, a script planned by about this time. Mm-hmm. And clearly that is not the case right now. Mm-hmm. It says, according to Direct, in a piece picked for by the Ankler, the studio to date hasn't received any draft of the sequel from the writing team. That would be Todd Phillips in, in those writing the movie. The film was earlierly, it was earlierly, earlierly? Okay. I'm, having a great, I'm actually reading fairly well, but screwing up certain words. Usually it's the other way around. Very interesting. <laughs> the film was earlier greenlit. That's just a weird way to phrase that. Am I wrong? Earlier it greenlit. greenlit earlier is what yeah. it should be. Yes. Thank you. So it's not my fault. It's the writing's fault. It's not my fault. I did nothing wrong. Oh. No, you writers do the best they can. Well, Brett, so you, am I. Brett, you need to learn how to read better. Thank you. Coming from the person who can't read out. Yes, uh, that's like um, me telling a pro basketball player they need to be better at pro basketball. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's, uh, yes. So that's, that's fine. <laughs> so the, the film was earlier greenlit by the studio owing to the unexpected success of the film, which grossed more than a billion dollars at the box office without China. You should, uh, you should make note. So not only did it make a billion dollars, it did so without China and it did so with an R rating, which is almost unheard of, mm-hmm. uh, in that genre. It's the highest grossing R rated film of all time. The announcement for the sequel was met with a mixed reception, mainly from people like, like Tim's all about it. Tim's like, I want to see a sequel to this movie. I'm like, this movie does not need a sequel. Yeah. This is a very art house film that does not need to have the story. I think it's continue. cool to have like an art house super super villain movie yeah too. Like, exactly just break from the form of being yep. like oh that worked we'll make 27 of them and that's what it was like <laughs> like when when we're like when i was watching the movie as it kept going and it got better and better i'm like oh i'm like every time something good would happen i'm like another checkbox it probably means i'm gonna get a sequel another oh oh that was great oh. you're like scared for it yeah it's doing so I'm, well I'm like, could like, you could you how like, do i protect you could you have like a, a lazy second act it would really help me not know me not have to deal with you getting a sequel i don't want that mm-hmm. so it says joker 2 is a film caught up in dc's volatile decision making it says dc the joker was predominantly independent outing free from the connections of the dc extended universe or matt reeves batverse the film uh, whose founder whose foundation was laid by martin scorsese's involvement in the project yeah he was involved in the very earlier stages of the project and he did produce the film so the, it deals with the idea of mental health depression anxiety social stratification all of which are themes that fit with this movie not so much with the flash movie Mm -hmm. that they keep talking about like how it's going to talk about mental health nobody cares about that so i am just bummed that there is no script yet but we'll keep an eye on this one i just wanted to give a quick update for that one and then move on so this one uh is from the bbc it says bbc or from lad bible it says bbc defends leaving in racial slurs in little britain scene did you guys see uh this article before i did you guys watch it i saw the article but i didn't like look into it because i was like i don't understand what's happening okay so it says the bbc has defended the decision to allow little britain scenes featuring racial slurs in the comedy when it returned when it returned to iplayer this month so basically they took stuff off uh, because of backlash, because of certain scenes. Mm-hmm. It says, Matt Lucas and David Williams' comedy show was removed from several streaming services in 2020 amid controversy surrounding some of the sketches. Following a series of edits to reflect the changes in cultural landscape, which is the most 2022 thing uh, straight from a publicist's mouth. Like, as they wrote that, they're like, man, I am so good at my job. Mm-hmm. Like, I can literally see that. Like, her name is, like, Claire... Why? No, not Claire. Her name is... Uh, what would I didn't her, write it. Oh, what, what would her name be? Her name would be... Uh, Courtney. Courtney? Okay. Is that what you said? She's Courtney? an Ashley. Yeah. She works at the she's PR a Courtney. firm. She's, she's like, here she's, we go. She's like bright blonde and she's, she's, she's got oh, her Oh, then degree. that's a Brittany. That's a Brittany. Okay. So Brittany wrote this press release uh, and she's like, yes, the changing cultural landscape, which is not how actual human beings talk, mm-hmm. but it, it is what it is. So it says, uh, it says... Well, it's the way you talk when you want to describe something that's yeah. real, but also not say... It's just become so difficult to know what's going to 
tick you guys off mm -hmm. yeah that we have to be careful yep. yeah however some viewers questioned why some of the offensive scenes were removed and others weren't i love because remember you can never make everyone happy what is uh ultimately offensive to everyone uh will then be boiled down to something that is slightly less offensive where until you're getting down to where you're at a scene where only one person is offended and it's joe schmo 37 on twitter mm -hmm. uh and then they're making cuts to scenes over to placate like two percent of the population mm -hmm. uh in particular the scene where student kenneth lau visits university counselor linda flint to request time off due to, f due to a family illness and it was lamb that was this was the scene that was lambasted on social media when asked to describe lau flint said he's got straight black hair yellow skin and the slight smell of soy sauce uh yes inappropriate uh is it something worth like imagine the amount of work that went into editing this out is it mm -hmm. really going to change anything or do we just let it lie and accept that people need to be able to take a joke once in a while was it insensitive culturally sure did they mean ill by it I highly, highly doubt it. Mm. So it says, when asked to do, okay, so it says, viewers were quick to criticize the Beeb for leaving this in, but the broadcaster has since responded to the backlash and defended its decision. So they've, I'm kind of, I'm kind of here for it, like that they're not censoring mm. everything. Yeah, it's it, interesting. It's sad that that's like the, the bar, like they're not censoring everything. It says, all jokes in our output are judged on context and intent. Remember, we are in a post-context world right mm -hmm. now where context doesn't matter at all to most of these people. Yeah. So it says, the BBC said in a statement, the sketches uh, in which the, uh, the character of Linda Flint makes references to the appearance or race of a series of people are intended to expose and ridicule some of the outdated prejudices and racism that still exist in parts of British society, which is more apparent when viewing the sketches within the context of a full episode and across the series as a whole. So in, 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 in layman's terms, she's racist. So we have to let her say racist things. Yes. The, well, they're saying, you know, like, you have to watch the whole thing to get it. Mm -hmm. Not cherry pick certain scenes and say, because imagine like a lot of this could be like, you could take one scene out and then it changes the vibe of the whole episode. Yeah. It actually reminds me, I haven't seen this series, but I've seen clips of, um, the you watch The Big Bang Theory, right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, the Sheldon mom. Cooper, the mom from Texas, like mm -hmm. makes all kinds of remarks that would but it's like because they're trying to show she's like kind of backwards and because like, they're from texas so they have to mm -hmm. make them seem yeah. like uh, she's a bible thumping texas lady it's, so yeah. it's one of my worst it's one of my biggest criticisms of hollywood is how awful they treat middle america and, yeah and, and i it, think I, this is similar i mean like there is obviously a class equivalent in england to yep. whatever we consider middle america to be uh, and i think in some ways that's what they're saying like we have to make her look this way because this you know we still think parts of our society are backwards mm -hmm. yeah so it says since the sketch was show, uh, since the sketch returned to the streaming service a warning appears under the episode saying contains discriminatory language mm -hmm. that's ins it used to be that we just put trigger warnings for offensive language now mm -hmm. it's uh con it's lack of context just discriminatory language at all can you admit they would have to do this to literally everything I don't think such a thing exists anymore where you couldn't find at least one thing wrong with everything we've watched. Mm -hmm. So it says, Little Britain has attracted some criticism in recent years over the way it depicted ethnic minorities and people with disabilities, as well as how it dealt with issues of gender and sexuality. That is like the holy trinity of things you're allowed to be offended about without, mm -hmm. yeah, without having to really come, drum up much of an argument. Anything can be looked on those lines and be criticized. Like, if the woman isn't perfect they're treated poorly if the guy is shown to be at all um needy in the relationship he's being or like uh asking something from his uh from his wife he's being patriarchal uh it's it's very clear to me that these things are all critical theory based and that you're go you could make this argument for anything they're talking about so if we're thinking their mindset so do we get rid of tv shows that are a hit like married with children yeah where oh they yeah that's um, problematic now. Mm -hmm. And then, like, TV shows, like, certain episodes of King and Hill. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. had really bad episodes where they mm -hmm. treated um, Luann, the niece, like, really badly because, yeah. like, she's kind of dumb. Even John Redcorn would be mm -hmm. considered problematic now. Yeah. Yep. So, if we thought that way, a lot of our favorite TV shows that kind of build up how television is today, yep. get rid of all of it, and, like, nobody can laugh anymore. Like, everything has to be, like a weird monotone laugh where it's not that funny it's not funny it's like they the comedians don't make jokes to uh, to get a to get laughs anymore they make mm -hmm. jokes to get applause 
Uh, they they want to be, you know, the, I read a really interesting article about the other day about the, it was, it was breaking down the movie, uh, don't look up. It says the rise of activist comedy, yeah. which is not comedy. It's just annoying. It's like the only way we yeah, need to. I think people are missing like uh, comedy right now is our only form of like oral, um, like auditory performance. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So in lieu of like people who delivered speeches or lectures, like we're like, oh, they're comedy. But yeah. like, we should just have people go on a lecture tour. Like mm-hmm. if that's what you want to hear, don't disguise it as comedy. Just be like, these are my opinions and I want you to listen. Yeah, In exactly. fact, I want you to pay me to listen. Exactly. Yeah. So. Let comedy well, be its own thing. Yeah. Also, comedy is a form of medicine which helps people cope with whatever they're going that's whatever yeah, it's going whatever on you're dealing with. yeah yeah uh that's that's the way i look at it uh, yeah so you can't take it away there's, because like there's some people who don't look that attractive and all they have is their humor that's uh well, sorry that's really me but i people make that joke yeah. about pete davidson i know don't take that away from him that that is yes that you guys is. think he's funny uh, no no i don't but that's i i also like i've only seen him on saturday night live and saturday night live hasn't been funny since that's like true. i was in diapers so i kind of wanted to watch his um like is it the king of satin island yes yeah uh, i kind of wanted to see that because it'd be like curious to see a movie that he is like really deeply involved in creatively because mm-hmm. like i don't want to just write him off but like I've never seen him perform in a way that like makes me laugh. Yeah, he's yeah. Uh, he. The only thing I've ever seen him be funny in was the Levi Wokes skit on Saturday Night Live, which is that one is kind of funny. That was like the last time I've ever seen Saturday Night Live be funny, and that mm-hmm. was like it's literally everything you can't make fun of now. It's like gender nonconforming denim. It's like styleless denim because style is offensive. Yeah, uh, but the that's... only thing that I have really loved on snl and i don't really watch it regularly is woody harrelson being joe biden yeah no. during the democratic like campaign mm-hmm. like he was hilarious but he's also not a series regular on snl i yeah. haven't watched since norm mcdonald did weekend update it's been that long i've never watched it consistently. i've only ever watched clips of it norm mm-hmm. mcdonald is uh was a national treasure thanks for watching this clip guys if you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media links are in the description below bye, bye.